power to register and vote. It is sacred ground because in 1969, Coretta Scott King led a march of some 1,500 demonstrators to the church in support of striking hospital workers in Charleston. At the church, they faced bayonet-wielding members of the South Carolina National Guard. The church's pastor and 900 demonstrators were arrested. It is sacred ground because it is a place of resistance, resilience, and opposition to racist, state-sanctioned violence. And because Americans, particularly white Americans, have a deep investment in historical amnesia, we are asked to pretend that the land that we walk on actually belongs to its current inhabitants. We are asked to pretend that the terrorist attack on sacred ground in South Carolina is a fluke born out of the hatred of an individual man rather than an act of terrorism perpetrated in the name of white supremacy and and American supremacy. If you haven't yet read the racist manifesto by that terrorist, I'd like to ask every white person listening to give it a read. You may be surprised at how familiar you find some of this man's views. I am not surprised at all. You may be asking yourselves, what does this have to do with Olympia Pride? This is a joyful, family-friendly, sunny celebration of our love of gay and lesbian people. And I do appreciate the love. I appreciate seeing youth and elders able to embrace their truest selves as LGBT people. I appreciate my straight allies who show up to support and love their families and friends and congregants. But I also think of June and the precursors to our modern day pride celebrations as sacred times and spaces because they were born out of resistance. The Stonewall Rebellion took place in the early morning of June 28, 1969 in and around the historic Stonewall Inn in New York's Lower East Side. It was a riot and it was violent. The violence occurred in direct response to and as acts of self-defense against the police who were, had a practice of continually raiding and terrorizing the queer and trans people who spent time there. The leaders and heroes of that uprising were black women and women of color, both cis and trans, such as Stormy Delaverie, Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera, and Miss Major. These black and brown women were not fighting for the right to marry or the right to be seen as just like everyone else. They were fighting for their lives. They fought and continue to fight against the police, against state violence, and against mass incarceration. This is sacred resistance, and that resistance is ongoing. The people who fought for our freedom were not cops, or wealthy white city officials, or gun-toting libertarians, or glad-handing politicians looking to get our votes. They were hustlers, injection drug users, people who lived on the streets. They were black and brown butches, queens, and trans women who do not have the option to decide that their struggles were just about gay rights. Yes. As Audre Lorde reminds us, there is no single issue struggle because we do not live single issue lives. <laughs> the people who fought for our freedom took care of each other, creating safe places to be themselves when, when, <clears throat> when the white gays, the white middle class assimilationist motherfucking gays took over the movement later with their assimilationist goals, kicked them out because they wouldn't act grateful for the scraps given to them by the racist politicians, racist police forces, and racist housing policies. They were black and brown people who understood that our liberation as queers is not distinct from other forms of liberation. And their struggle, my struggle, is not over. Yeah. Yeah. We are not free as LGBT people because I guarantee you that there are queer people locked up right now at the Northwest Detention Center. We are not free as LGBT people because there are indigenous queer people who struggle daily against police violence, cultural theft, and continual genocide. We are not free as LGBT people um, because we are among the black people who are killed every 28 minutes by a cop or some fool who thinks he can be. Every 28. We are not free because on May 21st of this year, right here in Olympia, Washington, Andre Thompson and Bryson Chaplin, two unarmed young black men were shot by Olympia police officer Ryan Donald. While these two men are not part of the LGBT community, they have become part of my community and my heart by allowing me to support them through their struggle to recover from this violence. Despite the persistent efforts by many white people, including so-called allies, to turn the conversation of, about race from a conversa away from a conversation about black life, away from a conversation about police brutality, and away from a conversation about the white supremacy that lives and breathes within every single white person standing here right now, I refuse to shut my mouth and let white people set this agenda. <laughs> Woo!
If what I'm saying right now pisses you off or makes you feel targeted and defensive, good. Use that anger and energy to help yourselves understand your own complicity in the oppression of the very same people you claim to feel proud of. Mm -hmm. And for the love of black Jesus, pick something other than America the Beautiful as the opening song for Pride. Thank that you. was just kind of fucking embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Woo!